everyone. Welcome to my channel. This video will talk about what is translanguaging. If you are interested in it, please don't move away and let's begin now. One day, when idly on the social media, my eyes were suddenly caught by a list of special and interesting pictures. Then I shared them to my mother and one of my foreign friend Peter. But they both seemed quite confused about what these pictures mean. I was quite embarrassed then. And later, I also began to wonder why they are unable to get these mixed languages understood. But I find them really make sense at the first sight. I find these mixed languages can be explained by a specific language term, translanguaging. Those who can speak more than one language have a very high possibility to do that. As a bilingual learner who can speak both Chinese and English, have you ever realized that you are also a translanguaging speaker? You may hesitate the answer, of course, but in fact, translanguaging occurs in every way in our daily life, but few people notice that. For example, when inviting your friend to go shopping, you usually say, 今晚去 shopping吗? You may not ask her, 今晚去购物吗? Okay, another example. If you are informed to be recruited in a famous company upon graduation, you may tell your friends, 我已经拿到了 offer, instead of 我已经拿到了录用通知书. So, these are two very typical translanguaging situations in our life. In the workplace, we also unconsciously use more than one language in certain communication. I will give you another example. In China, when a manager shares his report to his teammates, he will introduce like this. 本次会议将主要介绍Plan Few people may speak like 本次口头汇报将主要介绍方案一和方案二的具体内容. This is because the formal expression sounds much more natural and professional than the letter in a foreign company. Chinese employees believe chatting in mixed languages require less comprehension efforts when working in a foreign company. So translanguaging is closely related to bilinguals, those who can speak more than one language. In this way, it can be further applied in the field of bilingual or multilingual education, but with a more demanding transformation. For example, in a bilingual classroom, as a teacher, you should prepare a lot of different learning tasks for your students before class begins. First, students are free to read in their native language to gather information about a certain topic. And then, you bring them into a group discussion in English about what they have learned. After they separately write the story in their own language, you make them come into groups again to rework the story into English. Such a consecutive language task helps learners not only maintain a high level of mother tongue ability, but also acquire a second language. What's more, such a teaching mode tends to improve students' learning efficiency, enhance their long-term memory, as well as overall cognitive ability. And it will be especially be helpful in a multilingual classroom. A teacher doesn't need to know all students' native languages, but just provide space and resource to help students learn and cooperate with each other. Against the background of English as a lingua franca, over 400 million Chinese are learning English as their second language. While effective teaching methods are consistently in dispute, the translanguaging theory is a bilingual or multilingual education model which deserves to be further explored to push forward the bilingual education in China towards a more effective direction. <laughs>